we have very briefly been introducing uh, all for kids. Uh, Leo Mons uh, explained uh, some basic uh, screenshots and functionalities and some ideas about the project. We discussed uh, that it is aimed uh, at children, but also a playground for young developers, and um, that the localization for more languages is coming. And um, that uh, also from a code, code point of view, it is simplified uh, with uh, removing all dependencies on Java. And right. I think well, uh, Open Office for Kids is a product of the education project, a project that Eric Bachart and myself are leading. Um, the goal of the, of the, of the project as, uh, excuse me, what's your name? Andrea. 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 Said, what Andrea mentioned is basically create um, a suite that, is, um, that goes with the education market, especially the early education market, uh, by simplifying the interface and make it um, simple enough that younger kids can understand it, or younger students. Um, as you can see, well, uh, there are some modifications. They're not significant at the moment. Most of these changes were requested by teachers that have a day-to-day -day basis experience with younger kids. Um, the, the project started around maybe less than a year. Uh, the education project itself is pretty young, uh, so this project is even younger. Um, however, it has been, um, has been developed quite rapidly in, in, in this time frame. Um, so as you can see, one of the biggest changes that has been done is basically the, the overall layout of the interface and the icon set. Um, there has been some issues, not issues, but um, some like gray area with the icon set because most of the icons are trademarked by, by Sun and, and Open Office in itself. So having a different uh, version of Open Office. Uh, basically, we started uh, changing those icon sets to our own for two reasons. One is a trademark, the other is to make it more, I guess, kid friendly. So, um, that is one of the tasks. As you can see, it's not complete. It's we have just been limited to the, to the actual uh, application modules. Uh, we will be growing into the other functionality or regular toolbar or toolset of the application. Um, another thing that has been worked out is on the internals of OO for kids. Um, one of the major, most technical things is the PNG loader as opposed to the BMP or the bitmap uh, loader that op regular open office uses. So, for example, to create this art, um, a user in, in regular open office, our user will have to create the set on a BMP basis, which is very, well, very old. Uh, the, the bitmap has been pretty much dropped, and um, most people don't use that format anymore, and it's very heavy also. So the PNG rendering engine uh, really put us in at least the, the the present. I, I wouldn't say the future because pretty much the future of graphics is SVG, but at least the present, which is PNG, is a more compressed or compact format and with the same resolution. Um, and other things that have been applied has been the performance improvements that have been either coming from the performance project or uh, Eric Bachard debugging in itself that has being applied some of the performance bugs that have been detected. This make it uh, all for kids very fast, uh, more, much, much more faster than op regular open office. It also has been capable of um, basically installing on MIPS processors, which are very low, um, low speed processors. Uh, one of the laptops that Eric has been able to put it on has been the the OLPC, and uh, another laptop that is being produced in France. I'm not really sure the name right now, but it also uses a MIPS processor, which is different from a regular x86 processor in the sense that it's much more carbonless footprint, 
uh, and more uh, and much me uh, much less uh, megahertz uh, of speed, which uh, which usually makes it a cheaper laptop, a more affordable laptop for the school market. Um, so far, we have been able to start communications with some of of Europeans. Uh, uh, governments and departments of education that they want to implement netbook solutions to their schools and they have been looking forward to the production ready release of all for kids. This also opened us a big market in South America where, uh, where uh, OLPC has gained uh, at least more than two countries uh, the heart and basically they have applied the OLPC project and having uh, a, an open office compliant uh, version of, of, of in their OLPCs really put at a push education to a more, uh, I guess, competitive uh, manner. Um, in the same vein, we're working with the sugar team uh, to sugarize the interface of O for kids so it will be more natural to the OLPC interface overall user experience. Um, well, that's pretty much the speech. <laughs> uh, if anybody has any questions also uh, that want to make uh, right now, yes. Right. Well, the like I said, this is the brainchild of the education project. The education project in itself, one of the goals is basically an outreach uh, project or uh, outreach activity. So we can go to universities, schools that want to develop uh, for the education project and one of the initiatives is all for kids. Also, um, Eric Bachard created an NGO called EDUCO which means uh, education OO in, 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 in France as an NGO. And he has been able to, uh, with that NGO, to go and, and uh, fund the development of OO for kids and also um, uh, adopt teachers or recruit teachers to, uh, to, to participate in this as part of the NGO and have a position in the NGO. And, and constantly be working on recommendations and advisories for the development of OO for kids. Um, this has been really focused mainly in France because the, the organization is French and he's French and he has been able to move around France, but the overall vision is to grow this to uh, a global network. Um, most of the way that we have been able to recruit is by invitation to education events. So, um, for example, the, we hope that more education events take into account all for kids and invite Eric and make a, Eric able to go and recruit, I guess I'm doing his work right now here in Italy, and be able to invite to participate to this organization, uh, learn other teachers' uh, visions and, and, and advices and contribute uh, to the pool. Um, at, the, at this moment, um, there's some suggestion we don't have, we, we, we cannot, he's just one person and maybe the team might be up to five person developing for all for kids, so not all the advices have been implemented because, well, it's easier to come up with ideas than come up with code. But uh, we definitely are in that, in that roadmap of, of trying to implement as many as uh, humanly possible. So um, if there is any other question or you have anything to add? Um, well, I actually have a question. I've been following the project, so even though I'm not uh, actively involved, and I read about uh, a simplified interface in Calc that not only simplifies buttons, but also mathematical functions. Uh, and. Uh, it has an idea of roles, you know, different user roles, you can choose your expertise. Uh, could you explain this a bit more? Right. Yes, well, we have, well, the motto for, for kids is basically less is more. So the, 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 the more options we get to either hide or uh, deactivate 
the, the more all for kids has a, a play in, in, in this market. So since it's targeted mainly for elementary level schools, most of the kids really just focus on arithmetics, so there is really no need for logical functions or database functions or uh, log log uh, okay any other function that is complicated. Uh, so um, basically, that's why um, we have been able to either hide or restrict the amount of columns and rows. Um, so just because, uh, well, it really we really try to hide the complexity. We want the kid to click on the function wizard and have three options or four options as opposed to 26 or 46 options that might really scare the student or the teacher in itself that it just uh, can't remember the path to it. Now, these are, at this moment, I think is cosmetic changes, but as it evolves, it really will be a, a different distribution and user experience uh, on, on the O for Kids project. Also, it opened a big, uh, a big area that many people have requested. They, uh, many people have requested an O light version or, or, a, or a simple open office. Uh, these O for Kids can open that window, so it can, we can not only look at the education market, but also at the really beginner level uh, computer uh, schooling or computer training uh, solution. So, um, so for example, uh, basically, we, if we hide everything, we make it very simple or simple enough. Um, this could also be a tool that can be applied for older, elder people that have no computer background and are just starting and they can start well with this project. Uh, may, maybe a, a different project will be to reskin the, the, the O for kids so that it's not as uh, infantile or childish uh, looking, but it's simple. So um, this is also a, a, an idea that has been proposed uh, for, for the project. Use or are you in the process of producing guidelines for teachers and uh, leaflets or guidelines for for pupils? The material, you yes. mean like the documentation? Yes. Documentation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this basically had to do with my my presentation yesterday about the education project. Um, we do have other projects besides O for Kids that complement the project of O for Kids. One of that is, uh, is called uh, Campus Libre. Uh, campus Libre meaning a free campus for uh, educators where they can share uh, content and within that content one of the focus is O for Kids. So guides are definitely included, guides and tutorials in order for teachers to teach how to teach with O for Kids. Uh, so um, at the moment we, ho we just have the wiki also, which is uh, maybe um, you can write it on, on calc there. It's, it's www, I mean it's uh, wiki.o4kids.net, I think, dot, dot or, org, right? Um, so maybe you can type it there and increase the fonts. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So, uh, they're going to write it on the screen in a moment. So, the wiki basically, uh, at least the more technically savvy teachers can contribute by editing, producing. There is a space for guides and tutorials doing uh, word proofing or translations of the current guides that are available there. Um, currently, the wiki supports four languages. Uh, being French, English, uh, Portuguese, and Spanish. Um, I'm not sure if their Italian is there. German also. Yeah, German not yet. Italian is, is also <laughs> there. And um, we hope to, to, to enlarge this. The, I mean, it, it's definitely available for more localizations, and, and the project has that, the vision of creating more, more languages um, 
so Italian can be a, a, also a viable project. Um, also, there is uh, resources that uh, the, Edu the Educo organization, NGO uh, has in order to, once we have a, a good enough pool, to start like maybe creating a, um, like a booklet or, or, or some kind of a, uh, fast track guide that, can, that teachers can uh, buy from the Duco uh, organization if they want like a physical, a physical book. This is similar to the O Authors uh, project which creates a, a, the complete guide for open office. Um, so yes, th there is uh, available resources. Uh, some of them are, are really being developed uh, since officially O for Kids is not really a production ready. So we, we, we are in that process. <coughs> Great. So um, anybody else that has questions or any other question that really? Oh, yeah, before I remember. Um, so currently, one of the things that we hide also is the modules. So for example, base is not included and math was not included, but uh, recently was just put back into the project. Um, another thing that we're thinking about, um, we really need, we really need uh, support to, to, to make it happen here, is um, a programming framework that is easy enough. So, because we don't like, well, Eric basically, <laughs> don't like Java, uh, and we think Java is very complex, but we still want like a way for uh, maybe uh, uh, open up a window for doing some kind of automation. Uh, we're thinking if we can replug the PyUno bridge uh, without the need of Java, without the use of Java, so we can create a simple language uh, scripting or or adopt a simple scripting language that is enough maybe for savvy teachers to at least automate. At the same time, maybe uh, more user experience wizards that can be created so we can automate the, the way that a class should be organized. So new teachers just basically uh, open a wizard and create the lesson from the wizard put the material that they think is, is, is needed and, and just make a, a, a very fast presentation without really doing it from scratch. Um, we're also looking for templates, um, kids-driven templates that they can understand the concept of templates, but it's also maybe fun uh, and, and, and very um, visually attractive for the kids, not, not as boring as just a white sheet of paper maybe putting some some uh, cartoon uh, background or something like that, which uh, could help maybe motivate the kids to start doing, uh, well, basically uh, create documents um, that they think it, they, they will need. Fonts is other things that we're looking forward. If we can make more like crayon kind of fonts and, and just basically visually appealing font, font uh, <coughs> We are looking into that if we can, if we can uh, also receive contributions or, or especially Eric is a very technical person, so uh, his artistic uh, skills are not up to par to create really uh, a, a very nice uh, font type. And <coughs> myself, I, even though I'm more skillful in the arts, uh, we, we, we're always looking for help from people that, that specialize maybe in drawing. Even if you don't, um, even if you're not proficient in computer drawing, just basically sending a scan of your drawing in paper, we could uh, scan it or basically trace it and create fonts from the design as long as it's, uh, the license is, is, is open. Uh, we, we are very keen into reutilizing the talents of the community and, and applying it to, to a more uh, visually appealing uh, software <coughs> package. If I can make another question, um, kind of broad question, but uh, 
about all for kids uh, not as a product but as a project and um, you can immediately see and it's uh, already very clear also from your words that all for kids is a project uh, with its own agenda with its own identity with its own independence and with its own processes in the end uh, but this code is going then <coughs> to be probably reused for the official openoffice.org project that has completely different processes. I mean, if you make a specification for inclusion of something in OO for kids, uh, it doesn't look likely that uh, you will uh, follow the same specification process or the same QA process that uh, the original openoffice.org project relies about. And uh, so do you see this independence as an opportunity or uh, as a threat? And uh, well, uh, what's um, your, uh, your ideas about this? I mean, is it a risk or an opportunity? I mean, really, uh, there is no answer to that. I mean, time will tell, I guess, is the best answer. Um, and also making these decisions uh, throughout the road will pre pretty much either put us in one position or the other. Uh, not all the decisions have been made, um, not all of the questions have been uh, formulated, so there is really not a, an answer that I can give at the moment. The project is way too young really to face a discussion whenever it should branch out of open office or not. Uh, one of the issues that we're looking at is basically that even though maybe, maybe many people want to, uh, Open Office still has a strong uh, policy follow uh, dictated by Sun Microsystems. So if we are not complying with that license, even if the whole project wants it, they might, we might not be able to put it on. So at the same time, uh, Sun is going away, so there is also that, and there is a lot of uh, questioning on what is the route that will happen uh, once Oracle take over. So that is the kind of issues that when I mean that most of the questions haven't really been formulated at the moment. Uh, we still need to wait and see. Uh, uh, but then again, um, maybe we have a combination of both. Maybe we have the blessing and the tragedy in, uh, eventually and have a very uh, branch out project that has a whole lot more freedom to dictate what it has, but it also has to recline of heavy resources or a heavy community behind it to do or replicate the QA and all the other, um, well, basically uh, maintenance uh, costs that it, it includes, not to mention the infrastructure that, that needs to be holding the project. Now, um, then again, that's a scary topic <laughs> uh, because, well, not many people want to face those questions. Um, but if we do have to face those questions, one of the biggest playing that we'll have is how many resources do we have. So right now we're, we're, we, we really have a huge PayPal button, <laughs> but even if we maximize it, it won't really make a difference uh, if, if, if people don't click on it. But um, yes, we do need um, um, resources. We do need money. Uh, we are... Uh, open to, we need money for many reasons. We need money to fly to different countries and really uh, preach the gospel of, of all for kids. We need uh, money to basically uh, support more infrastructures, maybe more than, than open office. Currently, we already support more infrastructures than open office, like lower, these lower carbon footprint processors. So, um, and we probably want to go into other different uh, infrastructures if we have the resources and time to do that. So contributing really goes into, into development, not just um, into a, a bigger machine where the money might not, might not be very transparent. At least right now, because the size is so small, uh, most of the contributions really impact development, and, and, and this is a good thing because uh, you're really getting your money's worth uh, when, you, when you donate to this project. Um, 
So I guess uh, we also not just is, we don't, we not just talk about money and volunteering. There's also other ways to volunteer or contribute to the project. For example, if you push your school or, or you're a teacher in the position to to push your school to become uh, an open office for kid uh, testing center. Or, or, or are able to, to, to download Open Office for Kids and do uh, really good QA or feedback on, on, on how uh, it behaves on your school environment. It really, uh, it really is a QA that we're not paying, I guess, and, and, and it really is something that we're looking forward, especially on these initial parts where the project is still not 100% stable or it's not really where we want to put it. Um, um, another thing is if you're a government official that are looking for a policy, really it, it could be, uh, um, um, I guess, life-changing if we have the support of an education ministry or, or uh, even if it's a regional one and, and wants to implement this solution on, on schools. Remember, it's not just only uh, for uh, Linux, so you don't really have to have a, a, a full open source uh, implementation on your region, you can still work with uh, Linux, uh, with Windows, and, and, and still be a part of the open office, I mean, the O4Kit um, team, and, and make contributions on their performance. Um, this is definitely something that we're looking forward to, um, and want to, want to play a role into it. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, how does it relate to projects like Tux Paint, Tux for Kids, uh, and uh, Future Revolution? I mean, you know the project by Bill Kendrick uh, of Tux Paint fame. Tux Paint. Tux Paint. Sorry, my pronunciation is <laughs> not always perfect. Yeah. Is, there is full suite for kids, tusk for kids. Also, does it relate to this open office for kids to that project, uh, if any? Yes. Um, well, this this project really um, is called Tux for Kids. Uh, it's very focused also on on on, on elementary education and very beginner uh, level um, computer use. We haven't really had the time to meet the, the project, and we know the, about the project. We, we will still need to look at, wait and see if this is something that we can benefit from. Um, one of the restrictions also is that the open office um, uh, toolkit is very complex. Mm -hmm. So making changes in the UI um, is really isn't trivial, uh, meaning that, well, for example, the, oh, for, uh, the Tux for Kids application, they use a very specific toolkit. Um, replace a toolkit is, is really not an option because it's, it will just take so many hours. Joining the project is really an alternative if, for example, we don't see a house in, in open office or, or uh, infrastructure, or maybe being a joint venture between open office or project and the Talks for Kids project. Uh, we don't know even how many resources do they have. As far as I know, uh, 